it'd be wrong for me to say this is one of my favorite things about this scenario, but it is. Hey, it's all with another video, and I'm going to talk you through pretty much everything that there is to know about this Deaths of Chromie scenario. The objective of this scenario is to save Chromie eight times by eight different kinds of threats. To start this thing, go over to Wormbreast Temple, over in Dragonblight, over in Northren, over in the Lichkin expansion area. Get to the top, talk to Chromie, and get started. You'll do an intro where you go into an instant and come out and go back in and come out and then go back in, and then you come to this kind of grayscale sort of screen. This is where you can change your loadouts or otherwise start the scenario. Chromie accompanies you during this entire scenario. She's a pretty useful companion, although she does get herself into a little bit of trouble, but she does do decent damage and a little bit of healing here and there. She also has talents, and these are things that you can change. Talk to her, select the option, and you get a talent tree that pretty much looks like an order advancement tree. The first talent is immediately available, and other talents will be available as soon as you unlock them through reputation gains. And you'll get reputation gains throughout this scenario through all sorts of different ways. Mostly by killing. As a tank, I took Acceleration. As any other spec, you might want to get Time Stop instead. It's likely that you'll unlock this second tier after you try to do the scenario at least one time. In this case, you can choose to have Chromie be either a tank or a healer. The other talents are mostly for preference, although I'll just give my recommendations. For the third talent, I recommend getting Dragon's Determination. For the fourth, Blessing of the Bronze Dragonflight. For the fifth, well, that's obvious. For the sixth, get Keepsake Continuum. And the last one is pretty obvious. Now keep in mind, this scenario is not meant to be like super super challenging. By the time you get this final talent, you are pretty much have god mode at this point. It's at this point where if Chromie could talk, she'd probably be like, you're so bad at this game. Anyway, once you start the scenario, there's all sorts of different things that you can do. And we'll start off with your very first playthrough, which is going to be pretty similar to every other playthrough that you do. So if you've done this scenario a couple times and you have an idea of what you're doing, I'm going to provide a link below where you can skip to the good stuff. So I'm going to talk you through this scenario, and it doesn't really matter whether it is your first, uh, your very first time in this scenario, or if you've done it multiple times and you're just looking to optimize. The path is, for the most part, going to be the same. When you start this scenario, you might have a quest right on top of Wormrest Temple. If you do, pick it up. If you don't, don't worry. Fly your way down towards the Ruby Dragon Shrine. Fly low until you see a rare mob. Kill it and pick up the Sands of Time item. The Sands of Time gives you a random bonus. If this is your very first playthrough, you want to prioritize getting reputation. If it's not your first time, you want to prioritize the following. Powerful item, bronze drake, damage and healing boost, and then additional time. For the most part, nothing else is important. The little treasure might have a pet inside and a little bit of gold. Damage reduction isn't a big deal at all. And the time warp badges are low priority, but there may come a point where you just want to start farming those perpetually. Probably after you've unlocked everything else and completed the scenario. The powerful items are used in special scenarios called Chrono Portals, which you'll see later. These let you complete the Chrono Portals much faster than normal. Bronze Drakes are pretty much the same thing as the powerful items, but instead these auto-complete the Dragon Shrine objectives. Again, the whole idea of this scenario is to complete it in 15 minutes or less. This is going to be accomplished by a combination of your skill and power as a player, how often you get these powerful items or Bronze Drakes, or how much time you're able to extend the clock. So in the end, at least early on, it's a lot of luck and repetition. This is going to be mitigated over time as you unlock talents which make your character as, as well as Chromie more powerful, but this is just to optimize what you do and help you get through the scenario a lot faster. Anyway, with that first rare dead, because that's not a boss, it's just a rare, fly over to the Obsidian Dragon Shrine. If you stay low to the ground, you'll be able to see another rare. Kill that thing. Loot the Sands of Time, and as a reminder, make sure that you use your Sands of Time right away and also make sure that you're not engaging an important enemy. You might possibly complete a dragon shrine that you're sitting in, but you're stuck in combat. Anyway, once again, go ahead and fly into the black dragon shrine. Go down the hall, lean right, go to this ledge over here and look into the distance. You might see three little chests over on that, so on that far side. If you do see three chests, awesome. If you don't, you might want to double check your view distance, but if you're sure that they're not there, leave the scenario. There are chests throughout the scenario that give you anywhere between one and three of these Sands of Time, and it's random where they show up. There are two possible locations in each Dragon Shrine where they might appear, but it's never going to appear in both. You definitely want to see those three chests appear in order to get the highest likelihood that you'll complete the scenario on time. So anyway, assuming that they're there, make your way over, keep killing mobs because those have a small chance of dropping a Sands of Time as well. Tougher mobs have a better chance of dropping Sands of Time and bosses are guaranteed to drop at least one. So make your way over, kill everything inside because you're going to backtrack, 
loot the chest, get the sand, and if you haven't completed the shrine before, you're going to need to progress all the way through. It's going to take a while to complete a dragon trench for the first time. You have a couple of objectives to complete, uh, depending on where you go. In this case, you just need to make it to the very end and kill this named mob. My only advice is to not get hit by those rolling balls. Once you kill it and loot everything, make your way out. A little bit to your left, a boss will appear. Or if you haven't unlocked this before, you'll have received the quest to go to this location and then turn it in on Chromie, and then the Dreadlord will appear. The only tip I have for the Dreadlord is to stun when he's going to drop an Infernal. Kill that, get the sands, use it, and move on. Make your way south to the Ruby Dragon Shrine. There are two possible locations where you'll find a single chest, either here or here. Once you get those, you need to take out the three named mobs that are around the area. They're surrounded by smaller mobs, so try to be a little bit careful, but they shouldn't be too much of a problem. Each of these mobs drops an item that, when you combine all three, will help you progress to the boss of his dragon shrine. Go into the tree and encounter the boss, or turn in the quest if you still have a quest. And now you fight a lich. This lich can't be stunned, and it'll randomly freeze Chromie in place. Break her out quickly so you have the added damage. Kill the boss, loot, and move on. Make your way further southeast to the Azura Dragon Shrine. On top of this floating platform here, you might find the chest. And if you don't, go over here, and you'll find a chest there instead. The objective here is to collect items that drop from any one of these either large or small mobs. You do you, and kill everything in sight until you have enough items that you want. An extra action button will appear, click that, and you get a quest. Fly to this platform here to encounter the next boss. This guy creates a silence field at your feet, which cannot be interrupted, but it can be stunned. Stay out of the field, light him up, loot it, and move on. Make your way east towards the Emerald Dragon Shrine, but again, keep your eyes low to the ground for another rare mob. Kill that and make your way to the shrine. Chests will appear in one of two places, either here under the water, or here behind the tree. Get that stuff and basically kill everything that you see. And don't forget to loot either. Just like in the Azure Dragon Shrine, when you collect enough items, you'll get an extra action button, but keep killing stuff for now. As you make your way around the shrine killing everything, keep an eye out for friendly NPCs. Once you've made at least one round, go back to these friendly NPCs and use the extra action button. You'll go into the Emerald Fun Time Zone, where there are two mobs. Kill those things and move on to another friendly NPC. Once you've done this three times, you'll get a quest to go to a certain area. So go here. Kill the guy that comes out, and your main concern here is the sleep spell. This can be interrupted and the mob can be stunned. So to kind of backtrack, if this is your very first time doing these dragon shrines, I recommend very strongly that each time you complete one, you get a quest to turn in at Wormrest Temple, and you really should turn this in. This will unlock the Chrono Portals, which is basically like the stage 2 of the scenario. When you repeat this scenario, any Chrono Portals that you unlocked will stay unlocked, and any bosses that you have summoned will stay summoned. You just need to go there and they'll magically appear. What you did here is just kind of practice your route. So in short, start with Obsidian, followed by Ruby, then Azor, then Emerald. Keep low to the ground and kill any of the rare elites that you see. If you don't see the three chests in the Obsidian Dragon Shrine, you should probably just restart the scenario. Otherwise, from the Obsidian Sanctum, make your way southeast, killing bosses and using sand all the way through. Once you start getting bronze drakes, and you're not going to see them until you hit completed at least one Dragon Shrine, go ahead and use them to auto-complete so you don't have to kill the boss, but at least drop by these completed Dragon Shrines to get the chest. So once you have all that done, you should only have the Chrono Portals to go into. Each of these Chrono Portals have to be completed one time in order to get even the chance for the powerful item to help shortcut you through to appear. So I'll talk you through how to do these scenarios. Starting with the War for Anderhal, your objective is to take out a big gun tank looking thing. I'm sure this scenario probably plays out a little bit differently depending on your faction, but I'm Horde, this is what you're going to see. Anyway, you can't blow this thing up without using special items. You need to go to certain locations and kill certain kinds of mobs. These mobs will drop items that will either make your objective vulnerable or do direct damage to it. These guys can be pretty tough, so kill all of these the best way you know how. These guys also have a chance to drop Sands of Time, which will be very useful for you. And I happen to see a chest in this area here. Once you've killed all the major enemies and got all the items that you need, go back to the tank, use the items that'll make it vulnerable, and then use the items that'll do direct damage to it. If you want to kill it very, very quickly, you'll need seven of these items. Otherwise, you'll just need to DPS it down the rest of the way yourself. Anyway, once that thing's dead, go back and talk to the other Chromie and make your way back. If you have the shortcut item, all you have to do is talk to this NPC right here, follow the prompt, and you'll get credit. Go talk to Chromie to get the free sands of time and move on. The burning of Mount Hyjal is pretty straightforward. Go to the wounded Chromie to start a series of waves of enemies that'll try to kill you. 
Chromie will freeze them in place, making things a little bit easier for you. Over in this corner here, you might find a chest. Keep killing mobs until a big one comes out, kill that one, and you're good to go. If you have the shortcut for this one, you just need to go up to Chromie, use the item, and the very last guy will come out right away. Kill that and you'll get credit. The Well of Eternity is one where you'll have to be pretty careful, otherwise you'll lose a lot of time. Doom Guards, Fell Guards, and Abyssals are all over the place. Your best bet is to lean right and try to avoid Abyssals as best as you can. If you're forced to fight a Doom Lord, try to take it out quickly before you get overwhelmed. A Fell Hound will harass you and try to keep you in combat. Try to kill that quickly too. You need to make your way over to the other side, over to where the portal is, and you have to click it when you're out of combat. Once you get to the next area, at least as a tank, I just mount up and make my way all the way over to the boss. And if you can get away with it as a healer or a DPS, I recommend doing the same thing too. Make your way all the way down to the boss, go up the stairs and try to line of sight him. Once he's in position, unload everything you've got. You want to try to kill it before the mobs catch up. Once it's dead, loot it and make your way over to the portal right away. You don't have to wait, just click on it and you'll get credit. If you have the shortcut for this, use the item right away from your inventory. You'll get carried over to the boss and no other mobs will be chasing you. The final chrono portal will take you to the Calling of Stratholme. This is a series of fetch quests followed by a moderately difficult boss. The best way to go about this is to try to buy all the items that you need from all the vendors in town before starting this whole quest line. And off the top of my head, I don't quite recall if you need to have completed this scenario at least once before you can buy all the items from all the vendors. So you might have to run around a lot, you might not have to, but let's just assume that you can buy everything. You're going to be going to these different locations, and from these vendors, you're going to buy a total of 8 items, 7 unique, as one of them you buy 2 of. Once you do have the items, backtrack and start this quest line. Once you turn everything in, you'll finally have a key and you'll be able to progress. Make your way into the door, go up the stairs, and go past the bookcase into that dead end room. That way if Chromie's in combat, she'll evade bug and come back to you and hopefully the mobs that were chasing her will reset. She'll open the bookcase and let you go downstairs. Once you make your way downstairs, kinda tippy toe your way outside so that way you can get on your mount. Once you do, bump your way to the end but go around this corner here so you can line up sight all the mobs. Kill everything here, loot, and move on. Over where the original Colony of Stratholme boss is, is a new boss. Kill this thing to move on, but keep in mind of its one ability to tie you and Chromie together. When you're tethered, you and Chromie take a lot of damage, so spread out to break it. Kill the boss and you're basically done. So after all that rambling, let me summarize what you should probably do if you've been repeating this scenario a couple of times. This probably isn't the most efficient way to go, but this worked for me, so here's the summary. Start the scenario, pick up the quest. Fly over to the Obsidian Dragon Shrine, stay low, kill the rare. Go inside and look for the three chests. If they're not there, reset and try again. Go back out and kill the boss if you have to. If you complete any of these Dragon Shrines and they happen to give you the quest credit, fly up into the air, dismount, die, and respawn at Roomrest Temple. Turn in the quest, use the sand, and go back to what you're doing. Go to each shrine in a southeast direction. Pick up the chest, kill the boss if you have to, and move on. When all four shrines are completed, kill yourself. By this time, if you have two powerful items, proceed. If you don't have two powerful items, you probably want to reset. Prioritize to complete the chrono portals that you have powerful items for first. Otherwise, complete chrono portals in whatever order you like, but depending on your class and spec, it's going to be up to you to decide the order of the remaining chrono portals. And that's the complete guide, folks. I know that this was long, but hopefully this was segmented in such a way that this will be useful for you. If this was useful for you, awesome. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel because I love doing what I'm doing and I don't want to stop. That's all for me and I wish you all the best of luck, because that's what you need. I'm Sol. Stay breezy, guys.